All right, people, what's up? Let's see what's going on here. My little system is off. What's going on with you? Welcome back to the Onyx Report. Black Masculinist News for the day. Hope everybody is well. All right, let me go ahead. And got a good group in here already. And uh, let me go ahead and join and uh, welcome. Uh, Brother BGS. All What's right. Good with you, man? Hey, we don't chop it up very often, but y'all need to hit the like. Okay. <laughs> Here with the doc. I don't get to sit on in on class very often. Yeah, man. Had to had to pull back for a while. Uh brother injured himself at work a little bit. So I've been dealing with a few different things, but all is well. I have nothing to complain about. And, uh, you know, just wanted to kind of get my sea legs back online and have a conversation with my good friend, you know, uh, who just dropped a fire show, not but a few minutes ago. <laughs> uh, which which channel? Because it was on you know, my a, a BGS Idmore channel. OK. Yeah. On the BGS Idmore channel, looking at whether or not feminism has failed. So if you haven't checked that out, you might want to. Um Let's see, we got a lot of brothers in the chat already. We got Andre in here, Mr. Shug, Jaguar Archery. What's up? Argerson MC, what's happening? Got Indigo, um, Steven, Aaron, Tim, uh, Jakari. Jakari asked about, did you hear about the new Blade movie actor threatening to quit? Of course. Yeah, he's that's about his fourth time threatening to quit. So. <laughs> Yeah, well, if they were ever gonna make you fourth lead in your own movie, you better goddamn well quit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless, unless the, unless the check is commensurate with my suffering. Yeah, well, and with M the MCU, there was a time where that was easily done. Now I don't know because <laughs> I'm hearing that the Marvels are, uh, you know, uh, supposed to bomb. So we'll see. You know, ah, gosh, they buy they you know they buy critics. So we'll see how that pans yeah, out. Until yeah, the wheels fall off, huh? Yeah. Shout out to uh, Grab Second Gear. Shout out to Barry. Appreciate you dropping that information in the chat, Barry. Thank you. And I'm listening in the house. Creative. You know, what's going on? Uh, Barry dropping the 20 spot. Appreciate that. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, Spain Man in the house. What's going on? Black Soul King. Uh, Wunkler. Um, we got Volcanus. Appreciate that. Super sticker. Thank you for that. Uh, shout out to MLR on the Cash App. You know, uh, Pi May, the original. What's up, Marcus29687? Um, Larry, ghetto user. What's up? We got OVP, John, ABS. Shout out to Mr. Blue Collar. What's good with you? You're suited and booted. What's up? <laughs> it's been a minute. That's right. Wisdom. Uh, so, yeah, we're getting it together, man. Um, Number of brothers in here. I'm not going to, you know, Atlanta, what's up? Mark, shout out to Ghetto User with the contribution. Thank you for that. Passport OG, what's up? Passport OG, what's up, man? I like that that last piece he put up. So, okay, that's what's up. Nameless protagonist, what's up? Good to see you, man. Uh, let me see. We got Adric. Adric, I hope I didn't mispronounce that. 
Appreciate that support. Uh, Dante in the house. Appreciate that. Thank you. For, uh, thank you for the love. Leon. Says, uh, tax, a.k.a. He was right. Tax. <laughs> <laughs> he was right. Tax. <laughs> you, do you believe now? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, Ricky V. Appreciate that support, man. <laughs> that he was right. Tax. <laughs> I heard that. I haven't heard it put that way before. That's good. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. Say it again, white girl tax. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, uh, been a minute. I'm not going to, you know, we, we, we just going to chop it up a little bit. I wanted to keep it a little casual, but there were a couple videos that had some stuff I want to talk about. So, you know, that's, that's where we're going to go today. But in the meantime, make sure you support the channel, you know, like, share, subscribe, join and donate. So we can continue to bring you independent black male thought about a variety of issues. I got a lot of stuff that I need to catch up on. Um, I'm not going to do a lot of that today, but I will be getting to it very soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and it's and, and Doc, uh, be be sure to join uh, Doc's Patreon because uh, me and him are going to be doing some stuff on his Patreon, like reviewing um, some films and uh, and I, I'm thinking about doing a series, helping him do a series uh, just called Chopping It Up, where me and him just talk about whatever uh, issues are out there today, like we normally do in you know in in private just to uh, mm -hmm. give you guys a, a a fly on the walls view of uh, what we talk about as far as issues and stuff like that and strategy and that kind of stuff so right um, but the thing is that's only going to be on patreon so and we already got a request shout out to steven it says i'm pining for a black masculinist analysis slash review of three thousand years of longing Okay. okay, I've heard I've heard of the film. I haven't watched it. I've heard of it though. I saw the trailer for it. I remember the trailer, but I haven't seen the film. Mm. Um, and I can see why uh, Stephen is asking for it. I get. I think that's the one about a black genie. Oh, okay. You know, and a white woman. You know. <laughs> oh my God. White woman gets the. It, it's gonna be a lot of that, man. Yeah. A lot of competi so. Competition is gonna be fierce. Uh, the white woman gets hold of the genie, so you know. <laughs> I think he's naked part of the time, so you guess I, I, what that I, is. I, I wonder. I wonder what she rubs when they get him come oh, out of the bottle. You know what? <laughs> God damn it! I know. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know. Oh, He'd be top of his head. I don't know. Shout out to Jake's move. He says, "Hope your day is going well." Wanted to stop by and give you appreciation for everything you do. I've been watching you in WNTT for a good minute. Um, Got to go, but definitely going to watch this video back. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, Jake. Thank you. Uh, w. Pierre one donating the support of Black Male Thought. Appreciate that. Uh, Reynolds in the house, or Ray Knowles, excuse me. I didn't mean to shorten that. Um, so we we in there. Now, this 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 is not the, the first video I'm going to play. I'm, I'm just, I'm playing this for BGS because okay. I saw it and I just fell out laughing. I said, you know what? I got to, I got to send this. I had to send this to my boy. So uh, let's 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 go ahead uh, and and I, I want BGS to get first crack at this. Uh, yeah. Tell me what you think. Uh, here we go. Ever met a man who knew his worth? Clap if you have. I did a show last weekend and it was a couple in the front married for thirty five years and the, the the wife did not clap. And I I pointed out. I said, "Excuse me, you've been married for thirty five years. You didn't clap." She was like, "Tell you little motherfucking jokes, okay?" No, no. <laughs> Don't worry about this. He don't know. He don't need enough. So he don't know jokes. That's why you don't stay single now. <laughs> yeah, I met a man recently who knew his worth, and y'all, <laughs> when I tell y'all, that shit was so disgusting. It was so fucking. Do not recommend zero stars, because how am I supposed to manipulate you if you know your worth? <laughs> Like, I'm up here having problems, he's solving them. I'm like, bitch, stop! <laughs> like, all I got is titties and tears. Ah! <laughs> That's for you, man. All I got is titties and tears. That's all I got right. is titties and tears, man. <laughs> That's for you. <laughs> I never heard, you know, I never heard uh, women comedians doing this kind of stuff until the last couple of years. Yeah. And so it's interesting to see the honesty coming out in the comedy. Is, you know, comedy is that kind of space where you kind of get that honesty uh, in ways that you'll never hear in the larger society. But uh, give me your thoughts on that. Man. Well, the thing is that they get the comedy from real life. Right. And before maybe uh, before the manosphere really started to really take effect before Kevin Samuel with high value man, then knowing your worth probably would not have come up. 
but mm-hmm. he does. So they, every man that they date that's worth his salt is going to know his worth, right? So now it's reflected in their comedy in, in, in their in their art. So, yeah. yeah. no. And there was no conversation about a man's worth yep. until brothers started doing that work and having those conversations yeah. and building that up. There was no conversation about that before the Black Manosphere. Yeah, like the old gynocrat says, I'm, you know, she, she said, it, you know, stay out of my business. Okay. <laughs> you don't know. You don't need to know. You don't I got to wear one. Yeah. I got to yeah. wear one. Yeah. And that's part of the issue because brothers are starting to figure that out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, brothers, uh, even brothers who've been married are yeah. starting to figure it out that there's more here than I'm being told. Yep. And uh, it needs to be drawn out. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah, so you should tell you should tell uh, married men when they used to come through, you know, it's on my channel, right? If you're married, are you, I said, are, are you happily married? And they say, yes. Are you sure you want to be here? Because <laughs> if you know the truth, you ain't gonna be happy with your marriage. They're gonna have to, some shit's gonna have to change. So you may not want to be here. Uh, th- this one might be for you. Shout out to M Lavo. He said, "What's up, Doctor T? Just donating to the Spicy Chicken <laughs> Sandwich Fund. Add the cheese. <laughs> Let's not tell women their average." Like they do to us men. <laughs> oh, they hate that, man. There, there was a video, I think it's from, uh, uh, I think I, I forget what, what channel it's from, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, Fugazi, right? Uh, and women uh, rated themselves, right? And these, these are all fours, and they rated themselves, you know, eight, nines, and tens, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, they had a big issue about how come we can't rate ourselves, and why? Why was it necessary for the, for this rating? And how come we can't live in our own little bubble and stuff like that? So you know, they women hate. They build up this delusion around themselves, so they hate when you hold up a mirror, like like rating. Oh man! It, please let me try to see if I can get this on screen. Uh, somebody sent me this a little earlier, and I thought, you know what? Hmm. This is this should be something brothers should look at anyway. Um, yeah, here we go. Not the best image of it, but the average man has a hard time finding true love because the average woman doesn't realize she's average too. <laughs> and this is real. That's true. That is We've true. We've reached a point where you can't have this conversation. You know, matter of they, fact, you're called a sexist for pointing out. They do realize it. You know, when I when I get them, and I I real they do realize it. The thing is, is that you pierce the lie, like WandaVision. Okay, once you pierce the veil, pierce the lie, everything comes apart. Everything comes apart. They realize they know it because, uh, in fact, they know they're, they're where they fit in 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 the pecking order even before you do. Same. Okay, but they have to have you lie to them huh. to keep the fantasy going. And if you don't lie to them, you know, yeah, yeah, feelings get hurt. But they have no problem telling brothers who's at who's average. Yes, no problem or below average. Yeah. Or below average, absolutely, mm-hmm. and and we've been given that scale for generations, man. It's I mean, we, at this point, the the six figure scale is unrealistic, and and detached from reality as it's been, mm-hmm. um, because you're talking about a hundred thousand to nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. Yeah. Six figures has been the the kind of deferred answer, mm-hmm. for what which you know was supposed to determine your worth. Mm-hmm. You know, anything below that. Yeah, you know, you're considered, you know, unacceptable. You want, you want six figures, but you split verbs, okay? <laughs> but you split verbs. <laughs> oh, I'm my just, God. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be nice. <laughs> Shout out to Dr. Thunder in the house. What's good with you, man? What's up, Dr. T? Uh, two Triv in the house. What's up? Um, let me see. I missed a few people. Urban Naturalists. What's going on? Um. See, see, do, see, Doctor Thunder. I always tell Doctor Thunder, "Do you believe now?" Because I've been telling Doc, I was telling Doctor Thunder there's going to be a shift, and I don't know whether he believed me or not, but think he's seeing it. He's seeing the shift at his at his university. What so, what shift are you talking about? In other words, that that the, 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 they're swinging that feminism p- pendulum back the other way, and it's becoming starting to be uh, become policy. Ah, okay. So, Okay. And he he said it the last couple times that he he's noticing. He said it kind of caught him off guard. And he's saying the same thing that I think you were saying, right? But they won't admit their wrongdoing. Which and see, doing. and see, that's the issue. That's you know me. Yes. I, I, in that respect, I don't know if you consider it petty or not. It's not enough for me to to for you to acknowledge that you fucked up and what you're going to do now 
is just calmly allow men to speak. No, there needs to be an acknowledgement. There needs to be, whether it's an apology or an acknowledgement, but you can't leave millions of boys out here struggling and, and then spent years telling them it's their fault, then turn around and realize you're wrong. But instead of acknowledging that or apologizing to those boys, you just going yeah. gently yeah. let some black some men. No, no. You, no, you can have you can have the big no. piece of chicken after all, right? No, that's yeah. not enough. That's yeah. not yeah. enough. Yeah. Ms. Delta, shout out to Ms. Delta. Appreciate that. It says WandaVision ain't got nothing on Keisha. I, I, can't, sir, I can't take you Southern Negroes <laughs> anywhere, man. I can't. WandaVision ain't got nothing on Keisha Vision. <laughs> that's delusional for <laughs> real. And, and his wife would happen to be Keisha, right? <laughs> A shout out to MS Delta for that generous donation. Thank you, man. Uh, shout out to Compassionate. I see you in there. AB, what's going on? Uh, ain't seen AB in a little minute, but I have been, you know, checking things out on your channel. So I see AB pop up in there. Uh, Black Soul King, what's up? New member. Welcome to the Onyx Brotherhood. Y'all make sure you support, you know, subscribe. You can join, become a member here on YouTube, or you can become a patron on Patreon. You can support the Institute for Black Male Studies. You can support the Onyx Report. Um, and you can, of course, check out some of the film reviews we're going to do. Um, uh, I think we did the first one already on, um, oh, what was the first film? Damn. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we tried, yeah. tried to do it. Yeah. What was that? I forget the, man, I'm passing. I forgot the film. <laughs> I forgot the film. Um, but it ain't going to be Marvel's. Please don't look. I'm begging <laughs> you. I'm begging you. Please do not send me to see that movie. I am humbly asking that you not ask me to go see that shit i don't want to uh i will do it if y'all ask me to but i do not want to go see that mess any more than i didn't want to go see barbie but uh ugh, man i've already seen the cut scene at the end in the credits but i you know i don't want to go watch that mess um but anyway um so anyway so the, the main thing i wanted to do tonight there's a video that i, I was sent on twitter and it's actually by an, uh, an American born Nigerian mm -hmm. and he's having a conversation or he's, he's breaking down some things um, that he's noticed about Nigerian women. Okay. Now I'm not playing this because I have any comments about Nigerian men or women or Indians. And he brings up a number of different groups. I don't think he actually brings up uh, us in terms of, 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 you know, FBA, ADOS. I don't think he purposely brings us up formally speaking, but there's some patterns in this that definitely, I think, come from us and come from some things I talked about in my book um, in regard to, um, you know, the, the Black experience and how that's been, you know, kind of used in a very particular way. But uh, I don't know the gentleman's name, so I'm not, you know, going to, going to it's really not about him, but there's some things he, he dropped that I thought were interesting. And when I posted this on other media, brothers had a lot to say. So um, I wanted to play this with, with my good brother, BGS. And if you guys want to chime in and give your comments, uh, I think it would be appropriate. So let me go ahead and pull it up. Here we go. Nigerian women, East African women, women from Ghana, they have no cultural identity. And I'm going to explain to you what I mean. Okay. So let me make sure. Could y'all hear that? I heard it. Were you able to hear it? Okay, yeah, put, put a one in the chat if you were able to hear it. Yeah, and, sound uh, check. Yeah, just uh, you know, you know, back in the day, man, I done played whole videos that nobody could hear. <laughs> I'm not trying to go back. I'm not trying to go back. Uh, uh, shout out to Bruce Own Wayne. Said, look at all those dusty ninjas shining in the dust. <laughs> wow, Call them the dusty kings. <laughs> BGS tax. <in> the <laughs> wow, passport dusties in in effect. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to Electrician 480. What's good with you, man? What's up, Electrician? What's happening, man? Got the beard, man. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So we got a bunch of ones. So I'm going to let them continue. And uh, we'll stop it occasionally. If you got if you, anything you want to say, just let me know. I'll pause it. Okay. Go. go ahead. You see, I work in an industry, which is information technology. In information technology, there is one country that really, really stands out when you talk about information technology, and it's India. Indians, for some weird reason, I don't know how they, they got into that thing in their historical, the cultural context. They, everybody maybe went in for IT. The whole country made a powerful reference to IT, just like China made a huge push into industrialization that deals with tools. The idea of having the tools to make a car. 
Now, is he right in your assessment? Yeah. Ba- basically, uh, uh, he doesn't know why, but the thing is, remember the uh, uh, remember the Y2K problem? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, a lot of the skills to actually retrofit some of those uh, programs were actually lost, right? They couldn't teach them in the United States. So they outsourced all that stuff to the uh, to the Indians. So the, the so India from from like 1990 to like 1999 like 2001 made this big push to train as many of these kids in these old programming languages as they could right uh-huh. and uh, so they they did retrofit all the all the of uh, the Y2K uh, software and actually updated it and actually shifted the, all the all the stuff over to modern uh, programming languages but the thing is now you have all these these kids all these people that are trained in IT. OK, what do you do with them? OK, well, they're cheap enough. So we go import them as is a, a H1B visas. OK, they did that. And, and then because they speak English, OK, they are in the Internet. They also uh, put them into uh, uh, troubleshooting. In other words, uh, problem solving. Right. What do they call it? IT support. Mm-hmm. So that's how they got into it with, with American money. OK. America outsourced all that to India, so that's how they got into it. Same thing with China because of the uh, because of the poison of the poisons of the chips. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, they outsourced all their chip making uh, uh, facilities out to Asia, to uh, to Korea, Taiwan, and China. That's mm-hmm. that's why uh, China's a uh, uh, for twenty years China's a uh, um, ecosystem. Their 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 environmental impact was bad like half the water was bad because of all the the waste coming from off these chips and things that's what is american money that helped build them up so there's a long process why why that happened but uh he's right oh, about that shout out to Balari. he says he is southern nigerian Igbo. okay so he is talking of women from his part of the country and gozi is trying to out keisha keisha yeah i heard about northern that. part is different planet uh more similar to northeast africa okay? yeah now uh, that that mm. I, I'm not proclaiming to know anything about that. So I, thank you yeah. for sharing it, Valeri. Yeah. I don't want people calling me a you for you only for South. I, I ain't said nothing about it. Igbos are more Americanized. Yeah. But but the reason I brought up the question of India in terms of what he said though is it was yeah. very reminiscent of um uh of Booker T. Washington turn of the yeah. century, yeah. where he was trying to, you know, advocate for African Americans to corner the market in a similar area. Because I think right. what he's saying. Is they actually made IT, uh, you know, part of the cultural push in right. India, right? And there was a time period where we could have made a similar decision as far as being, you know, tied to the uh, for the IT of its day, as it were. Yeah. Um, and it, it sounds like a very similar push, but it sounds like something we, India we, we, did. It, well, they, but India has it had its own infrastructure to actually do that, its own right. colleges and stuff like that. Same thing with China. Oh, it was, was a okay. Go ahead. Does the Indians cheat in IT? They don't actually know what they are doing. Okay. Well, uh I would, I would. They might be, but things they do know what they're doing. Okay. I wish. I wish that wasn't the case. Good. No. Your, your top one percent goes to uh to the to the uh, Indian um get the Indian uh, uh like their version of MIT. Okay. Wow. To, to go to school. So those are the ones that actually come over. In fact, Stanford is full of them. Shout out to Growth Talk um with kofa y'all support the growth talk with kofa channel good to see you bro uh ain't seen you in a minute what's up Lashawn? got a few people in here blade runner what's going on um but yeah you know and and one of the things i've noticed is the indians got so deep especially in um uh in the bay area that they yeah. were implementing the same type type of caste system yes that they had in india in in the bay same same thing with seattle up you know up, right, right around microsoft and places like that yeah mm-hmm. yeah um let's yeah, see so all right so let me go back to it here we go uh, or make a a, a a shoe heavy industrialization that they can use to serve the world india went into this heavy thing about information technology mm-hmm. in my 12 years of working in information technology everywhere i go it's loaded with indians it's all if the information technology for example um if a place has maybe twenty thousand workers i'm talking about a huge place in which maybe ten thousand of their workers are engineers software engineers computer engineers so and so forth i can assure you that of the ten thousand nine thousand five hundred will be indians Mm -hmm. so what has been my exposure there indian women they're the one you have they're four feet some of them little four feet four feet you know things small things that are making 
dream money. They came direct from the village into the system and they're making 180,000, 190,000, 200,000 dream money. But there's a strange thing I notice about them. As they come to work, they're wearing that their native wear, that thing that they tie and hang on their neck with that dot here. Another strange thing I've noticed about them is you will never, ever, for all my years, I stayed in the United States, I was born here. In all my years of staying here, you'll never hear the Indian women dragging their men to the American court system for divorce. Uh-oh. Mm. It is our women that use the American court system to destroy our men. They mm. bring the court in to help them destroy the men. You will never hear Indian women doing that thing. Okay. Yep. Okay. Let's get to it. Yep. It's culture. Hey, any thoughts about that? It's, it's culture. Yeah. I was saying that about the uh, Islamic, black Islamics, right? Uh, the thing is, is that uh, just because the law says that you can do it doesn't mean that you, uh, that, that you need to do it. Okay. Mm. You could, you could give those children to the men, just like the, uh, the, the Eastern Islamics do. If, if you want to have a pay, a true patriarchy, but they don't, mm. you know? Mm. Yeah. That's why. They don't, yeah. and, and and the Igbos, uh, they never wanted to be underneath their men anyway. Well, um, this is where he's going with it, and and, and see again the reason that the main thrust of why I wanted to share this with you, for those of you who've never seen it before, is because I'm saying everything he's talking about has been mm -hmm. perfected against the FBA ADOS community first. Mm -hmm. It's been perfected on us. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's long since worked. Now the question is, are other groups going to appropriate these same cultural behaviors? That's the question on the table. And what he's uh, he's breaking down is that has not happened yet as far as groups like Indian women. He's going to talk about some others in a second. Mm -hmm. But I found that interesting in and of itself, you know, as far as, as the culture of that, which has become so, you know, in the West, yeah. it's, it's yeah. just it's yeah. normalized. It, 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 but it but it's slowly it, they're behind, but it is starting to change. OK, mm. I've been I've been reading uh, 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 even in India, I've been reading feminist literature coming out of India. So. It is slow, but it is changing. Here we go. You will never hear women from China taking Chinese men into the American court system to destroy them with divorce. You That's will true. never hear women from Korea dragging their men in huge numbers into the American court system to destroy them. But when it comes to African women, East Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, when it comes to African women, they just drag their men into the court system. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've noticed in this system or in this problem is poverty. Bring these Indian women, they're making 150,000, 180,000. They don't drag their men into court. Plus, sometimes, like in most places, all the places I've ever worked in information technology, they'll have one car. Not that I'm supporting that behavior, but there's something strange on why I see them. They have one car. They wait for their husbands. Even if their husbands are working two hours over time, over their time, they'll wait. Some of them pregnant, waiting mm -hmm. for their husbands. When mm -hmm. it's finished, they go into the same car with their husband and drive home. Mm -hmm. I watch Indian women and women from so many other places. They're not crazy about the Louis Vuitton, Gucci, all the designers wear. They're not even interested. Indian women, I meet them. They've been here 15 years, 20 years. They still keep their accent. They still speak as if they're living in India. Mm -hmm. But when I meet our women, and our women, all that they have to do is just get to a level of where they're making 50,000, mm -hmm. 60,000, 70,000 or 80,000 a year. I'm talking about small money, it, small money. Immediately the marriage is in danger and they change. They start mm -hmm. bleaching and they start talking. Sure, sure, yeah, sure, 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 yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, I went, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> they become right. Americanized. Huh? Yeah. He's talking about he, so they start bleaching their skin. They, yeah, they, yeah. They're speaking differently, dressing differently. They they become really into you know uh, the what the major brands, a different thing. And it's interesting. He started talking about sixty, seventy thousand dollars because in the black community we started to talk about this when black women were getting welfare. Right. Yeah. That's the interesting part about it. Yeah. When black women started getting welfare. We started to notice similar behavioral patterns. In terms of how they perceive black men, the scissors, yeah, yeah, that, that Monahan scissors, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But he's so he's describing African women at the point of sixty thousand who are starting to make that switch. Mm -hmm. And you know, the question is on the table whether or not other groups of women will follow suit. Uh, one of the brothers earlier pointed out that it is happening that there is a change taking place with other groups of women. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, yeah, here we go. So that was Alex. As foreign women here are starting to do the same thing slowly but surely. Yeah. 
Uh, I've been hearing about more more feminism in India and in Africa, but yep. it clearly hasn't reached the point it's at. It's reached in the United States. That's no. the issue. No, clearly a very different standard. But the question is, to what extent is it coming? And if the country in question doesn't have laws similar to the United States, how far can it go? The laws will change. It's just like it did here. The laws will eventually change to reflect it. Mm. So, it, so it, it, yeah. Because the environment will change, and that's what me and Nate was actually talking about. Is just the, uh, you know, uh, sometimes you know, like, like I was just talking to um, uh, uh, what's his name, Jesse in Ghana, and he was tell, saying that uh, because of the internet, the women are the women in, in, in West Africa are trying to adopt some of the same uh, similarities, some of the same attributes. But the thing is, they can't enact them because guess what, the environment doesn't support it, so they can't, right. you know, they can't take you to child support and right and and divorce and all that kind of crap. They can't do that because the environment, the, the, the social environment there, economic environment there will not support it. But when it does, then you're going to see a different shift. thing. It's going to be a different well, shift. Yeah. Let me pull up a few, a few yeah. quotes. We got Nameless. He says, uh, and they're adopting the ADOS model of feminism and going full in. He says, mm -hmm. I, I blame Kamala Harris opening the gate for this mess. <laughs> they, mm -hmm. they got in under the person of color clause. All right. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, M. Lavo says that the, the Black Valley girl voice. Mm. All right. Um, Baleri, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Mm -hmm. He says there have been countless cases of Southern Nigerian men bringing wives over. Women turn full Keisha. Cases of women assaulting their husbands or getting killed by husbands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, shout out to Salchi. We got Salchi in the house. So the gentleman in the video is 1000% accurate and i was mm -hmm. hoping that my tech guys would 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 you know weigh in mm -hmm. on what he has to say and he still has a few more things to say but you know i wanted to hear from you guys as far as this is concerned uh let me see nameless comes back up he says they're also trying uh back in india depending on the province to start introducing more laws specifically mm -hmm. with marriage and divorce yep 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 i read it it's all it's if you if you go through the medium you see this stuff pop up in the medium all the time about how they're you know from, from women from india trying to weigh in on indian feminism so it it is yeah. spreading it is it spreading is spread. yeah uh shout out to ty 313 says do you know the average indian american income is a hundred thousand and uh and run and they run 50 percent of the u.s hotel businesses yep. and maybe that's the reason they can maintain culture yeah, for for a minute until you, you add, but ask the uh, the daughters that come up because there's that's been oh, yeah. happening for a while. The, the 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 ones that come over here still maintain their culture, but the thing is, but the but the daughters in the school system that are raised in the school system they start to lose it. Well, you're but even seeing seeing it in in the Indian film uh, tradition. They're they're yep. actually having they're making films about Indian women raised in the U.S. going back yep. to India and back right. and forth. Right. Um, so they're addressing it in their own kind of way. Uh, to what extent? I'm, I still don't know. I haven't been to India. You know, it's not the primary area of my research, but mm -hmm. I like to keep my ear to the ground when these kind of conversations come up because I'm curious to know which way things are going. Shout out to uh, Ian and, you know, in the chat, dropping the information on the channel, man. As usual, Ian's been putting it down for years. Appreciate that. Good brother. Hope you're well. Um, but I interrupted you. What were you about to say, BJ? No, no, no. It, 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 it's just a matter of time, right? The thing is, is that what I'm what I'm hearing is be, is because the the uh, the women, the the Adolf women in in America look like them, right? Mm. So they they're, they're modeling themselves after them because uh, I've been heard this a long time ago. Uh, the women, the Adolf women in, in the United States, are actually big sisters. Okay. Oh hell. So they are. They look at them as big sisters. So basically, they they lead they lead the, the black culture in the diaspora. So they, they aspire to look like, uh, aspire to act like uh, black American women. One thing I will say to anybody doing that, look at the, the lives of your mentor in question and mm -hmm. decide if that's how you want to live. Mm -hmm. Because if you take enough of their advice, you will definitely live the way they are living. You know, okay, maybe, level. They think they can make it as a single mother. OK, uh, shit. MS Delta, uh, Mississippi Delta says second generation Indians are dating uh, out with Brad and Becky. Yes, they are. Yeah. Yes, they are. Uh, Hurricane Greg says infrastructure comes with feminism for Africa and India. Yeah. Yep. All right, let's go back and see what else he has to say. I went to New York and I'm like, even I who was born here, I don't speak like that. I look at others like the Chinese. They can't speak English very well. 
you know and their women may be driving very expensive cars that belong to their husbands and i look at the indian women who don't speak english very well and they're not interested in changing their accent on their undertone and they wear their native dress that thing and everything to work i look at korean women i look at other women they have this sense of cultural identity african women do not have a sense of cultural identity whatsoever little money and the marriage is over mm. one thing i've discovered a common trend once the women make they go nurse mm. eighty thousand is all yep. they need to make and mm. suddenly your, your marriage is in danger they mm. want to call the shots they mm. want to be the ones that control everything and if you don't like it like that they'll bring in the american courts to destroy your life yeah, destroy everything around you they will insult you that and i'm like eighty thousand is all that it takes for someone to change or seventy thousand because most of them even the eighty thousand is over time they've worked themselves sunday saturday saturday night sunday nights they've worked themselves to death that money that they make as over time is what is now changing into something that they will destroy everything around them yep you know this the part that i see also is that a lot of and i re remember whenever i make my videos i refer to bitch ass men bitch ass <laughs> men we, it has come to a point where we really wait a minute <laughs> Even the first time I watched this, I was so not ready for him to say that at that moment. <laughs> I think it was the accent. I just wasn't ready for it. He he put the M instead of the N, though. <laughs> oh my goodness! But I, I he caught me off guard with that one. But let's let's hear him go in. He can't define marriages in the African context anymore in the United States because the man is changing diapers, he's washing the plates, he's sweeping the floor. He's um, cooking. Most men now have to cook to keep their marriages intact. Um, he's picking the kids and dropping them. Like in what? Like I, I like I've seen the experiences. I don't need to go for. I don't want to go to you know. But the woman is shouting at them. Where's the child's belt? Where's the child's socks? Where's the child's everything? And the women go around telling everybody we are partners. He's not. There's nothing like head of the household. We are partners. Hold on. Hold okay. on. So the men mm -hmm. are partners. What did I say about partners? Mm hmm. If you hear gender and hear partners, you know it's a marriage 2.0. It's a feminist marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Automatic. And, if, and if you give her what she wants, or if yep. you don't give her what she wants, she's yep. going to be upset one way or the other. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you give her what she wants, she loses respect for you. Mm -hmm. You don't give her what she wants, she fights you, you for you, control. You're, to you're toxic. Yeah. Yeah. But she. But the the functional element to this for her is control. And this yeah. is what this comes down to. This is really what he's identifying. Yeah. Her con her uh, her push for control uh, yeah. is is paramount in, as far as this feminist framing. Shout out, shout out to Janet Jackson, right? Oh my goodness. Um. Uh. Well, yeah. As long as you leave pleasure principle, Janet, alone, I'm with you on that. <laughs> yeah. If y'all ain't seen pleasure principle back in the day, I don't know what you're watching, but that was <laughs> that was oof. Anyway, uh, C.J. Jackson, I don't know if I miss, I butchered that. He says, uh, I watch Indian news channels on YouTube and seen Indian women in Thailand. That feminism is coming on the news channels. Women's issues come up a lot. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Uh, Balari comes back in. He says, I speak Hindi and pretend not to when I'm around Indians. Ooh. <laughs> Those of them raised in the West are among, among the worst and most annoying Western wannabes. They act more annoying than Becky and Karen. Yes, Ooh. they do. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've seen them. I've seen them myself. Yep. I'm curious to know what they had to say about you, Blairy, if they didn't if, if, if they didn't realize you spoke Hindi. I'm just curious <laughs> if you ever ran into a situation where they talked about you right in front of you. Yeah, I know it's yeah. happened. It has happened, yeah. I know it has. But, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, he's almost through. Let me see. Doing everything in the women's role and also doing everything in their role and they also keep their jobs. And that is supposed to be the perfect. If you don't do like that, they'll call American court on you. This partner thing, I've tried. I've seen people try it, and it leads to disaster. Like he says, okay, so since I'm the one doing the laundry and washing the plates and cooking the food, can you help me change that bulb? No, that's a man's job. Uh oh. Okay. Can you help me change the engine oil in the car? No, that's a man's job. Okay. Can you help me paint the other? No, it's a man's job. The the women are quick to tell you what's a man's job. But you must do your job and do their job now and do their job and keep your job also in the society and come back and still even there's no respect you are ha you are supposed to be submissive or the marriage ends on your head and when you look into it she started making eighty thousand dollars and i compare that with the indian women who make a hundred and fifty thousand a hundred and 
What happened? I don't know. Okay. It might have been all of it, it, it all that I got. Uh, I thought it was longer. No. But that was it. So, you know, I thought he brought up some interesting points because he's fundamentally looking at how even in, you know, American-born Nigerians, you know, experience in IT, in this whole area, he's still seeing the same transitions that I think have pushed a, a lot of different men into being passport bros and whatnot. He's seeing the same thing kind of infect those areas. Yep, right? yep, yep, yep. And he's, no. he's making some observations. And I was hoping that I know I have IT brothers in the chat. I know I have brothers who are in, in industries that, that have parallel kind of experiences. I wanted to hear from you all about uh, what, you know, to what extent he's right, to what extent you've seen the same kind of things, or whether or not you've seen things that, um, you know, are, are along his point, but, you know, in a whole different direction. I wanted to get your thoughts on this because, you know, um, that's not my, that's not my lane. It's not my area. Um, shout out to MS Delta. He says, my Nigerian brother, you didn't know the matrix has you. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, you know, again, as we're seeing these kind of shifts, I think one of the other things that ends up coming into play is more and more men start asking questions, especially if they've not already been tied into these kinds of conversations. They start asking questions. And where is that going to eventually bring many of them? Right. They're going to come into spaces where brothers have already been do taught, having these conversations, already doing this work. So what, what we're seeing here is, in my opinion, um, the kind of early stage of the tar baby. Yeah, that, that's that, that's what I think we're seeing. It's the early stage of the tar baby yep. where people are in are coming in. They're they're basically asking questions. Like if you take this brother, if, if this Nigerian brother has not been affiliated with the black manosphere, but he's having these questions, he's making these observations, you're starting to see yeah. the same dynamics that will eventually pull brothers like him into spaces like this mm -hmm. because these brothers have already been talking about this for yeah. years. Yep. Yep. The other element to it is I think uh, you know. It also illustrates about the manosphere that it's not just a collection of pissed off men whose lives didn't go the way that, you know, you, we've heard all the, you know, uh, kind of propaganda about what men must be like in these spaces. What I think this kind of thing shows that men, is that men are responding to the, the conditions of their environment. They're responding to the elements that, 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 you know, push people on a sociological level into certain types of behaviors, asking mm -hmm. certain types of questions, pushing for certain types of policy. It comes out of a response to the environment. And I think people try to water down the space and say, it's just, you know, some frustrated men. No, it's men responding to mm -hmm. uh, conditions in the environment that for the most part are inescapable. If it gets to a point where the majority of divorce, the majority of marriages end in divorce, the majority of divorces are initiated by women, that is an environmental issue. That yeah. is not, I just picked the bad or a bad woman. That that no. goes beyond that. We're yeah. talking about programming in terms of, of how that woman was raised in a collective, in a yeah. society that yeah. advocates for a certain idea of womanhood. And of course, relies on an easy divorce to take half of your resources. Those mm -hmm. things, we, we like to individualize them. And I hear people do it all the time to dismiss what men are saying, but we're, what we're actually responding to are conditions in the environment and people respond to those conditions on a macro scale. And we're witnessing other groups of men and women who are employing similar cultural ideas and coming to the same conclusions. conclusions. It's yep. happening slower, yeah, but it's happening. Yeah. Yep. You know, yep. It's so spreading. It, we call it the, the tangle of pathology. Tangle of pathology. Now he's saying that there are groups of women that, that do not do that. And I think it's a good contrast, but you know, part of the problem with that is, you know, like the brothers in here have been saying, that doesn't mean it's going to last long. Yeah. It hasn't gotten to you yet. That's all. I haven't gotten to you yet. So, you know, these are the uh, conditions that are happening now, just as often. Um, so Bill Reed, it says from an old boomer, all women, all cultures, when you hear the woman refer to you as a, uh, her significant other, then it's over. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Um, yep. Uh, but let me see. Uh, Valeri says uh, they talk smack trying to flaunt whiteness because they got Western passports. You experience more racism from them. But when they get their wake up call, they want to be fellows. Uh oh. <laughs> That's true. Uh oh. Um, shout out to Nameless says to be fair, a lot of black men in IT have been begging other black men to join. 
because they knew how these Desi Indian folks get down. They were seeing it back in 2015. Yep. Okay. Can you can you can you elaborate uh, on that, uh, BJ? Yeah, they've been complaining since since uh, the mid 2000s with the first wave of um, of um, what do call it of uh, uh, of the H one H one B visas coming through. So okay. About for, for a good minute, for almost 20 years now. Shout out to David White. Appreciate that support. He says, I've been in the IT field for over 10 years. Men go out their way to avoid working with women. They're insufferable, very rare to see exceptions. And soon those exceptions become like the rest of the insufferable women. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. They get enough of them, they, they, they project power. Hmm. Okay. Um, Mr. Me Too um, says, uh, hey, Doc, how do I get a signed copy of the book? You know, I, I still haven't figured that mess out. Yeah, I'm about to. You guys can send me some ideas on how to go about that. Um, uh, I do have a PO box. We might be able to work with that. But uh, let me see. Yeah, yeah. You work probably work with your with your publisher. You get a discount rate on books and stuff like that, so you can uh, have a, have a, a a case of them for signed copies. Okay, I'll reach out to that. I've never thought to ask them about that. Mm -hmm. um, so shout out to Mr. Me Too. Appreciate that uh, question. Uh, and I will reach out to the publisher and see about that. Oh, what did I do? I hit the wrong button. There we go. All right. Um, okay. So I was trying to, let me see. So Floyd says, uh, well, this is interesting. Floyd says the sisters in HR at these tech companies help Indians take power in the IT field. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. How's that work? Why are they? What's what's their motivation? They're closer to white, and they think that the that the these uh, Indians will help them move move up the ladder. Ah, uh, okay. Where they, they predominate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you, and you dusty ninjas are not worth it. So. Ah, uh, okay. Oh. Uh, right. Oh. But as far as the shift, have you been hearing anything else about uh, it's culturally about this shift with other groups of uh, women and men? Oh yeah, it's all over the world now. It's not. It used to be just local. Mm -hmm. It's all. It's all over now. So it's it's spreading. You know, um, spreading like wildfire. I just I showed a. Uh, I just showed a video of South Korea, and uh, they they uh, they're having a hell of a time with their women. The women don't want to get married. They're not having kids. Uh, and what we're doing here in the United States, it's on steroids in Korea, you know, mm. in, in like like a one quarter of the time. Mm. Mm. So, you know, their birth rate, they're, they're, they're on their way to extinction, really, is because if they can't get their birth rates up, because their birth rates are well below one. Well, I think the question that, that I ask in these scenarios is, you know, how men, what men are going to actually push back and require and demand from society in order to ensure their continued participation. That's where that's where the the, the, the two parent uh, advantage and in, in, in the Brookings Institute are coming in, right? Uh, uh, they're going to have to start emphasizing uh, men. In other words, they've been pushing men back, but now they're going to have to reverse that trend. In other words, they're going to have to start promoting men and boys and making husbands and 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 and, and pushing uh, instead of this individualist culture, pushing a two parent household again. And they have to make they have to put money behind it to make it happen. Because, uh, now, because now the uh, it's not just the black men are dusty now white men are dusty too. So, uh, shout out to Jehudi. He says uh, these Indians have taken over uh, the management positions and they are flying over their people and not hiring any Americans, no matter how qualified they are. Yeah, yeah that 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 trend is going to reverse itself uh, in a little bit because. Um, uh, uh, because uh, this whole this whole push to uh, indigenize uh, uh, indigenize certain certain processes, they have to they're gonna have to start training American workers for it. The thing is that um, the, the whole thing is is the reason they, they get away with it to actually train these kind of professionals is very expensive, right? So the cheapest way to do it is is outsource their training to another country, so from child to to a graduate, right? So by the time you get him, most of the expense of training him or educating him is already done. You just have to pay him for what he's worth when he gets here. So it, it's it's almost like outsourcing jobs. So oh, this is 
This is interesting. Uh, Atlanta State Focus says Italy went three months without a birth. They're in trouble. I haven't heard anything. I, I've heard that. I have, you know, I've heard it. I've, I've seen the, 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 the report on it. I haven't been able to verify it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it, it's, it's out there. And I've been looking for cooperation. I haven't found it. Yeah, but, that, but, that would be extreme. I've, that is uh, three months. Yeah, wow. yeah. I, I, you know, it, it's, it's, it's almost like an internet, uh, internet um, conspiracy rumor. I haven't, haven't been able to verify it. hasn't it. been verified yet. I mean, I've been looking for it. I haven't verified it. But yeah, they're at, Italy's at 1.1. 1. 1, uh, and uh, I think Spain is at 1.2. They're the lowest outside of, uh, outside of Korea. They were the lowest in the world. Okay. Uh, Gabe says no hiring managers hire people, not women in HR. HR. HR just facilitates the hiring process. Managers and leaders make the hiring decisions. Okay. There's a bit of a debate going on as far as that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard, I've heard a, a lots of stuff going on with HR and hiring process. Yeah, they. I mean, you, you know, HR can can function like the neck. You know that old analogy, the neck and the and, and head. And, yeah. You know, it, it can give away with quite a bit. But I can't speak uh, to IT. You know, I'm not. You know, it's not my area. So you guys, I'm, I'm really relying on your opinions to inform uh, what's going on and your experiences too. Yeah. Uh, Nameless says those ads, yeah, they're repeatedly pr- reporting how far below, uh, what is that, uh, recruiting quotas they are between being disillusioned and physically not qualifying. It's no bueno. Okay, yeah, so he's yeah. talking to- Yeah, uh, uh, the one thing I say about Trump, he tried to cut back on the H-1B visas is that, uh, that the uh, IT was actually asking for. Because the H one B visas are actually cheaper. So. Mm, okay. Shout out to uh, Wrench Turner. Good to see you, man. And run into you a minute in a minute. Hope you're well. J S Hooper says I've been working in my career as a software developer for 15 years. Have never had a black coworker. Damn. 80 mm. percent are Indian. H R hiring managers are often black women. However, Indians mm. and Asians only hire each other. And I, I, you know, I got a couple other brothers on Facebook that were commenting on this very video. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one of the brothers that I know on a regular basis always points out, says you got to, you know, when you talk about black folks in IT, he always raises the question about how many of them are ADOS. Mm. And, you know, that, that he, his argument in that is, you know, that sometimes these companies will use other groups and pass them off in a very generic fashion as far as blackness, but they know full well. That they're not hiring uh, brothers, uh, ADOS brothers, to the same yeah. extent. Yeah. Um, which is something, should, which, which something we need to push for. If the if the wave is going to go back the other way, to emphasize, man, we need to be at the front of the line. Hmm. And that, to me, is the question, though, as far as what we're going to push for. That's really, um, you know, what I was interested in in looking at this. But let me see. Gramercy Riff says uh, uh, feminism has been running rampant in IT. Black women are completely embracing it and create programs for black women and all women only. Black men are a part of the problem to them. Mm-hmm. And this has been happening in a lot of different areas. And I've been saying this, especially since the pandemic started, when they started really, you started seeing these large corporations advocating for black women, creating programs for them, setting aside resources and jobs like mm-hmm. Goldman Sachs and Visa and Google. And, you know, one of the things I've always said is that's not just the corporations operating on their own, which you often had were black women in relatively high positions who were urging their corporate their corporations to advocate for them, you know, in this this woke era, as they say, uh, and using their positions to get the corporations to advocate. And when they do, they don't advocate for the black community. They advocate strictly for black women, maybe sometimes girls. Uh, maybe LGBT, but there's not a focus on black men. Black men are exempt from being, you know, reflected upon and, and invested in, which leads us back to the question of what is it we're going to push? What are we going to require? Uh, and what is it uh, we want? And this is one of the reasons we started talking about the 17 point agenda years ago, mm-hmm. because black men have to have an idea of what it is they need politically, uh, socially, on every level. What is it you want? Because right. there's coming there, there's a point coming where people are going to put a microphone in your face mm-hmm. and say, OK, you guys have been making noise. What do you want? Mm-hmm. And you need to be prepared to articulate what you want. Right. And I don't know how many are. Uh, well, it, you know, it takes a while for, for the worldview to actually change. So that's what we're doing one step at a time. 
Okay, Jehudi offers an interesting point. He says, I'm an FBA in IT. Uh, there are plenty of us in IT in the DOD. Yeah. I'm the yeah. DOD if you're an FBA man. Okay. That's true. That's very true. I hadn't heard that. It's the best way to get hired, but that's been that way uh, because government that looks at, looks at you differently than the private sector does. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Steven says, Yvette Carnell literally did a show about this years ago about this as well as the caste-based discrimination practice amongst them within Silicon Valley. Yep. That is true. Yeah. Yep. I don't remember the show she did, but I do remember the topic. And yeah. uh, it, it it's not surprising if you reflect on it, it you know, because it has a lot to do with how many Indians in the last couple decades have really been transitioning into mm-hmm. the field and into American spaces. But it, it makes sense, mm-hmm. you know, once you think about it from that vantage point, any group that's going to come over and predominate, they're going to they're going to invoke their own cultural framework. As long as they have the power and autonomy to do so, they're going to do it. Um, so it's not surprising when they do the color cast system among themselves. Um, OK, so Philip says, uh, I think we should work on building our own IT companies with Nigeria, Ghana at all uh, to Halo to uh, give uh, black Americans another resource for hiring because Silicon Valley are libertarian. The thing is, the thing is, and this is the problem, because uh, what, what's stopping you is access to capital. Mm-hmm. OK which is, you know, the, which gets into the whole reparations fund, why that's important, okay? Because it's not cheap to start this stuff. And then the company that make it have access to capital. Mm-hmm. So that's what's talking it's, it's not, we're saying what we need and actually doing it are two different things, right? It's, it's not that easy. Let's put it that way. And the competition is fierce. Gabe says, exactly. He's, I think he's responding to you. He says, there are no H, H-1B visas within DOD work. Uh, there are plenty of firms like Raytheon, Lockheed, AFS, uh, who only hire Americans. Yes, they. Yeah, be, yeah, because they because they're, those are government contracts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jehudi says a black woman in HR tried to fire me, and it took other black men in the company to stop her. Yes, yeah. black women have sold out and hate us as much as anyone else. And they've been that way for quite a, quite a long time because they're looking to get sisters in. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That, well, that's, it's that's interesting. That's because Kevin, Kevin was talking about this in corporate America in the 90s. Mm-hmm. And I've heard brothers talking about it in corporate America in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so it's 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 not new. No. It's not new. I mean, that, that, that contempt for black men, all it requires is, you know, a woman with that contempt to be in a position to leverage it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's when we start to hear these kinds of stories. Yeah, because sister, you know, sisters in IT in, in HR and those upper level positions want you to kiss their behind. They want you to kiss the, the, the feminized ring. And mm-hmm. if you don't, that means you they put you on the block. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, we had uh we had a uh associate that was going through the same thing in his job, right? With a sister coming in. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Now this so. is what we're dealing with. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but um any thoughts uh, overall that we can, you might want to close out with as far as uh, what this brother's talking about? He, he's, he's, a hundred, he's 100% right. In fact, I'll send you the uh, the text I got in Telegram from uh, Jesse. He said the exact same thing. Because because the African women, because because they're black and we look like them, right? Mm. So so when they see the, the, the black women on TikTok and Facebook and, and YouTube, okay, they start to aspire to be like them. And uh-huh. that's the problem that they're having. Whereas the Asians, okay, we don't, they, well, the, the black one don't look like them. So okay. they, 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 they can't see themselves as, as those women. So they, they, they maintain their culture a little bit longer. But, uh, but the women in Africa, no, they, they, since they look like us, they aspire to get what we have. Because guess what? When black women show off in America, oh, it's the best places, the, 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 yeah. the makeup, the best dress, and, and on these fancy trips and cars, they aspire to be like that. Mm. So, so that's why it's it can't spread because they can't afford to buy this kind of stuff. But they, they, their dream is to come to America and be like black women. Let me see. We get uh, JS in here. He says my company combined their women and in tech initiatives with Black History Month. Oh mm. shit! Mm. All the graphics and banners were promoting black women. Um, I just shook my head. This is how they exclude black men in corporate America. Oh. Yes, they do. Yeah. Wow. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. Better you says a lot of black women I know say their worst experience in the workplace has been working under other black women. I always found it interesting. 
Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the queen identity is pretty strong amongst black women. Uh-huh. It's interesting. If you go check, um, uh, what's the, uh, oh man, Pink Book Lessons, you got a couple shows on the mayor, the black woman mayor. Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes. You want to yes. see, <laughs> see some queendom? Go watch Ooh. that. Ooh, that is that is that is the woman king on fire. Okay. Oh my god, it is it is powerful. And you watch, and she actually has video of other women are you know proving empirically, like with data, what this mayor has been doing to the city, <laughs> and it's a mess. You and know, she she, she, she has a whole male consort, you know, yeah. she did on her payroll. So yeah, on yeah, her payroll, yeah, it's, it is a mess. Yes, yeah. And but the the funny thing about it is there's one woman in particular who's speaking out against her, the mayor, who's doing all this stuff. And I think she spent like 150 grand on a car or mm-hmm. SUV or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the woman who's speaking out said, "Yeah, I voted for her. We pushed to get her in office because of Kamala's influence and mm-hmm. Black Girl Magic mm-hmm. and Woman King. Yes. And we wanted her there. Yeah. Now she's screwing <laughs> over the entire city and she's spending up all the money. And this woman's so cold. She she locked the bill. I forget what." It was like, I forget what committee it was. She locked the building and wouldn't let any of them in their offices. I said, God damn. Yeah. Oh, yes, man. queen. Yeah, it can get abusive, but people don't, they don't want to talk about it. Uh, shout out to Jerome. Says, salute. You're truly a credit to FBA. Thank you. I appreciate that, Jerome. Thank you. Uh, uh, let me see. So we got Andre. Says, uh, that woman in the video BGS played earlier about the two-parent privilege had a video on the Brookings Institute channel. Dr. Gigi posted it, and she was more focused on the black community there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we're, the, we're the tip of the spear. That's why brothers need to, you know, read Dr. Uh, T's agenda. You need to help Dr. T spread this word, okay? Because the academics are the one they actually listen to. They actually counter some of the stuff coming out of Brookings and, and University of Chicago and that kind of stuff, right? We, we This is our time to actually get our buckets and get our due. Because we can't let this pass, okay? We got to, got to be on our, um, like like Doctor T said, we have a small window to get through. Yeah, and, and if we if we miss that window, we it may not come again. Yeah, and and the thing about it is, this window has been, you know, black men have built it. They yes. really have. I mean, this yeah. is something I've never seen in my lifetime until social media. I've seen black men create their own space, create their own language, and slowly, if if. If we choose to do it, we can build a political base out of this, 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 you know, that last decade plus of work that brothers have been doing. It's just a question of whether or not y'all want to. Um, and, and it's the time to do it. You got the window to do it. But if you don't take advantage of the moment, mm-hmm. it can pass. Uh, you know, things fall out of favor. These, you know, the videos kind of aren't, you know, people aren't watching them as long. And you miss the opportunity to transition that mm-hmm. into a useful form form of sociopolitical power so there's an opportunity to do it that's one of the reasons i created the 17 point blackmail uh, you know agenda political mm-hmm. agenda uh it's because i'm trying to say look man we, you, you gotta we gotta put these things out there you know for people to see because you know media's flit, it's fl- it flits we can we can be we can easily transition yeah. out with a blink of an eye yeah and one thing susan vinker was saying and she's you know she's part of the elite right and she was saying Thank God for YouTube because if it wasn't for YouTube, these this, these kind of messages would never get out. These ideas could never bubble up. So, yeah. so don't don't don't. I know people like to poo poo YouTube and what you do on it, but thing is, it's extremely important. And, and it 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 has uh, so much power. But there there is one thing I wanted to share from the book mm-hmm. in regard to uh, this whole conversation. You know, especially what the what the gentleman was talking about. Let me see mm-hmm. if I can. Find it here. Where did it go? Eh, there it is. All right. So this is uh, page 14, mm. right? In the Black Relationships. I wanted to share this little paragraph here. Um, it says, uh, this, is, uh, this is the unexplored aspect of the Black struggle, not just the decline of the Black family, conveniently occurring after the Civil Rights Movement and during the Black Power era, but the weaponization of the family and one's love for them against black men. Mm-hmm. This is this is fundamentally what this Nigerian gentleman is, is, is talking about. He's starting to experience it slowly but surely. But this mm-hmm. is this has been happening, you know, against us for decades. 
right? Empowered by birth control and family court practices, women hold most of the power regarding family productions, divorce, child custody, child support judgments. Beyond sex and impregnation, whether intentional or not, men have little decision-making power about any of these elements. As such, Black women are more in positions of authority over the family and in many ways determine the family's perspective regarding Black men. Yes. This is the, well, this, I think this is very much tied to the tangle of pathology you talk mm -hmm. about a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the extent to which the shift can take place with other cultures and in terms of the laws and policies you were talking about earlier, this right. is how this is one aspect of it in terms of how that can happen. You got generations of, of the family shifting in her control, right, through policy. Mm -hmm. And you got to grapple with that. And he's saying, I'm starting to see it happening in my own community. I'm seeing others that it hasn't affected. But as you gentlemen pointed out, it's starting to. Mm -hmm. So this is steamrolling. Yeah. Spread spreading throughout the whole matrix. Yeah. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. so the question becomes, you know, what what are men going to require now? It, it, withdrawing from society has been something that we're seeing men starting to do more and more of. Right. Right. But there's going to come a point where we have to articulate more clearly what's required for our participation. Mm -hmm. Electrician says the time is now to seize political power for black men. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, this is the time. Um but, you know, just wanted to kind of share that little paragraph, because when I say it's the missing uh, part of the black struggle, we have talked about, you know, I, I'm a professor in Africana I, you know, since undergrad. I mean, I've heard countless lectures, read materials back and forth about class, about color, about racism and white supremacy. And, and you know, I, we, we've gone back and forth over all the issues in the black community. And, they, and many of them have merit. I'm not denouncing that. But one of the things I find that the academy, most especially, likes to dance around as if it isn't happening is the way that policy has played into uh, weaponizing the family against men. Now, the, the, the most you'll hear is gender war, maybe. And that's right. usually online. But yeah. when you really pass push past this generic term gender war, mm -hmm. what I'm talking about is the weaponization of the black family against its men against black men in particular, and the use of policy in that. And I think other men, because we're the canaries in the mine, in the coal mine, right? other groups of men are slowly starting to experience this. White men, white men, have, have, has, they started to experience it after we did, right. but they're, 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 they're already grappling with it. Many of these Indian, Korean communities, they haven't really grappled with it full on yet. Um, you know, that's why you had the rise of the white manosphere. That was in response to these same conditions. Mm-hmm. You know, that's where you get MGTOW and a lot of other aspects of it. They're responding to the same conditions. Mm -hmm. so the question is, what are we going to do? So you'd be surprised how many people are watching us because we are decades ahead of them. And I don't necessarily mean that in a positive way. It is what it is. But, you know, they're looking to see how far this shit can go yeah. and how far it can devolve. Or what, what kind of remedies that we have come up with. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And the question, you know, then becomes, you know, what are we going to have to say? What can we advise? What can we suggest? What do we require in order for us to participate? Uh, I know I'm I'm not even going to try. <laughs> I apologize. I don't want to butcher your name. It says Nigerian women in Ghana have told me on different occasions that they idolize as well as seek to emulate Beyonce, Nicki Minaj and others. And, and other, yeah, yeah. They make Italian is big in, uh, in 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 Ghana and Nigeria. Yeah, uh, huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, and and, it's in the, and even in hip hop, you're starting to see the same thing. And um, a lot of people, and this, I've even noticed it with my students, who are strong advocates of women in hip hop. It's interesting that their historical memory is so short that they really focus on the last five years outside of a few key individuals but uh let me see if this will let me show you this image off of facebook um you gotta be an old school hip-hop head to know um who i'm gonna refer to you refer you to but let's see if it'll let me do it here let me share the screen here apologize i'm a little rusty Bear with me. Um, Got to get your sea legs back, Doc. Got to get them back, man. I'm moving slow. But anyway, so there you go. Can you see? Yeah. Right there. So if you remember Nikki D 
If you're an old school hip hop head, you remember Nikki D. Um, old school hip hop artist, right? One of the early women in hip hop. And she points it out. She says the female genre of hip hop today is the prostitution <laughs> era. Yes, it is. And this is be it, so it's not it's not the you know the the, the Lauren Hill Queen Latifah ninth circa nineteen ninety four mm-hmm. it's the prostitution era that's getting global recognition with women from other countries particularly West Africa we replaced Rose with Keisha there we go All right so this and and this is the so this is the influence that's going out these are the standards this is the culture that we're hearing in the music. That's inspiring people alongside what's going on in the workplace. In, in this instance, we're talking about IT, right? Um, so it's, it'll be interesting to see what you brothers have to point out about it. Let's see, uh, Ty says, is this the black family affecting the world or the American government culture policy influencing the world? That's well, it's both. Question. It's both. Yeah, it's both. It, it, it actually is policy and infrastructure that affected the black family. And then as you export that, that kind of infrastructure out to the rest of the world, that this is what comes with it. You used mm. to blame it on us, but the thing is it, it wasn't just us. It was out. It's actually the policies and infrastructure. Mm. Yeah. So we got to, we have, I think we, we have the attention of the world, even though, see, here's the thing. We, we, you know, people think that we don't have the attention of the world if we're not actively on CNN. Right. You know, if you don't see people like us being interviewed, we must not have it. And I'm just yeah. I'm just telling you, brothers, have been, I mean, men in particular, but even some women have been reaching out to me for the last five years from all over the globe, asking mm-hmm. questions, at, you, know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, about our experiences and what we're doing. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that, as I'm pointing out with this entire video, other cultures are now starting to walk down that same path that we've been in for generations now, and they want to know where it's going. So yeah. you you, know, you got a lot of people for different reasons who are paying attention to what you're saying and what you're doing. And my question to black men is, what are you going to do at this moment? Yeah, that's the question I fundamentally wanted to ask with today's episode. What are you going to do with this moment? Are we going to devolve into just talking about Keisha and or are we going to actually t- take this moment, take advantage of it, and mobilize into something effective that can actually change yeah. the quality of life that we tend to live more often than not? Can we do that? Can we change our own quality of life by elevating the stage we built and using it to create something effective that can improve our son's lives? That's my question. Yeah. Do you believe now? You know, That's all I can say. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming through, man. I know you just finished the show, so you did two back to back. I thank you for that. Man. Man, all I had to do was ride shotgun, man. You did all the work. You did all the driving today. So, well, and I appreciate the brothers who contributed because, again, IT is not my space. I don't claim it. I don't claim to know about it. So, I do appreciate uh, the brothers that that offered their opinions and even the debate amongst you. You know, it was informative, so we could kind of see, you know, what some of the differences on, in perspective are. Um, because you guys are in rarefied air mm-hmm. in terms of being an IT in IT. You're so highly trained, it's very small percentage of people that can actually function in those spaces. So for those of us who aren't in it, you know, it, it's it's a bit and, of a mystery. And, and with AI, it's gonna get even rarer. So basically. So. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, Break yeah. That down. oh yeah, oh yeah. Break that down. Why is that? Is because uh 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 um uh, chat GPT and other things like it are actually writing programs faster. Than the IT uh, guys can, so oh, okay. they're starting to lose jobs. So I've, I've been hearing that, you know, on the wire. Okay. So uh, you stay, ahead, stay ahead of the curves, you know. I yeah, tell my all my all my IT guys, don't you know, don't get complacent, man. Uh, keep studying, keep keep learning, and stay ahead of the curve. Yeah, we need you guys to keep your head on a swivel, man. We need yep. you there. Yeah. Uh, ruthless, and, heartless and, revelator. And stay, and stay away from Keisha. <laughs> Shit. Ruthless heart, heartless revelator says, unfortunately, since this phenomenon is spreading globally, this only proves that there's nowhere to run. We have to make a stand now. Uh, the thing is, is that you can run. You you, you can stay ahead of, of, of the of the wave. OK, uh, making a stand is not going to change anything. OK, you trying to make a stand is not going to change anything. This is a global thing. The, the Basically, the pushback is already here. OK, so. Uh, 
So it's, it's not running. So if you can find happiness for, for 10 or 15 years, stay ahead of the curve. Okay. Well, I interpreted it in terms of making a stand as far as black men mobilizing the moment. That's what I was thinking. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you're going to have to do that anyway, globally. So. Well, just because we have to, you know, it don't mean it, it's, it, it's going to happen. Brothers have to choose it. And that's, and that's what I'm really curious about. And I hope we do. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, we already know where this goes. Mm -hmm. We know what happens if we don't take this beyond anything else. It was John Henry Clark said it once uh, in his documentary, A Great and Mighty Walk. He mm -hmm. talked about his frustration with the 1960s. And one of the things he said was there was too much performative gesturing. It's not, I forget the exact term he used, but he was saying there wasn't enough work. There wasn't enough action on the ground. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of posturing. And basically, he argued that we did not take advantage of the 1960s and maybe even 1970s to the extent we could have mm -hmm. because we didn't do enough work on the ground. And I think he compared the black community to Japan at that time to make his point. What I'm saying is we have a current moment. We are still in it. Mm -hmm. It is not over. We're not looking back at it 20 years later saying we could no. have done this and we didn't. I'm saying you are in it. The opportunity is still here. Yeah. Are you going to take it? The window, the window is just starting to open. Uh, go, go look at uh, uh, there's one thing I liked about Andor. There's certain moments, right? Okay, where um, where the I, I think it was called the Eye. Uh, I forget what the name was the Eye or the Prophet or whatever it is. Why it only happens like one every twenty, once every twenty years. If you miss that window, then you, you miss it. And they had to do something within that window. Okay. Okay. So the thing is, so in other words, the window was just starting to open up, right? And we can't get complacent waiting for it to trickle down. We have to we have to seize the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Seize the moment. And uh and that doesn't mean we all gotta agree on everything, but right. it does mean we, you know we can't be stagnant. We got right. we actually have to advocate the things that we say we believe, stand on it and yeah. speak up on it. Yeah. If you can turn that into a political community, if you can if you can turn it into uh you know any kind of just shake the tree and push and see yeah. what we can create. Yeah. But if we do nothing. We already, you know, we've already lived where that goes. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We did that. We, we, that that was our mo. Don't go to sleep. That's what happened after the uh, Kerner Commission, right? With with the affirmative action, right? They started giving you a, a few little goodies, and then you went to sleep, mm -hmm. and didn't follow up. And you went. Your women didn't help. Let's put it that way. He said, "Let's put it that way." <laughs> well, she advocates for herself, and this is one of the biggest shifts mm -hmm. in the black communal idea since the 1970s that we never thought would take place, especially in the nationalist community. Right. Still talk about the community as a community, yeah. but it, it, in the last three or oh, no, four decades, what I've yeah. witnessed yeah. is the transition of women from community to themselves. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, I've, I've had a video basically when black women back in the seventies said, yeah, uh, you have to take power from our cold dead hands. Okay. Yeah. I remember that video. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that being said, at what point, and I asked black men this question, at what point do you advocate for yourself? Yep. Yep. That's where SBM. Nobody's coming for you. And it's going to happen again in this pre next presidential election. You're going to see presidential candidates coming around barbershops, mm -hmm. using moments to, you know, have these bullshit surface level conversations with black men. Just once, I would love to see brothers actually advocate for policies that actually improve their own quality yep. of life and not these generic discussions about blackness and the community because again she advocates for herself yes she does and she's unapologetic about it yes yes she does you know but anyway so thanks for coming through good brother and and i appreciate everybody who came through i do want you to continue to drop your your perspectives your experiences in it or fields that you think have a parallel to this we can actually kind of get us get a sense of this. You know, is is the Nigerian cat who we play today? Is he right? Is is what he's talking about? Is that something you've seen? Is he missing something? What do you have to add to it? Uh, and this is an opportunity for me to learn because I'd like to hear from you brothers that are living it. So please make sure you contribute your opinion. And I appreciate you supporting the show. All right. Uh, and check uh, check BGS's latest video. Um, <laughs> It has, is it called, has feminism failed? Is that what it was? It has feminism failed, yeah. Go check that out, and uh, I will see y'all soon. Uh, all right, appreciate you coming through again, BGS. Oh, oh, anytime, Doc. All right, here we go. Let me pull you down. Y'all have a good one. I'll let y'all soon. Peace.